Hi there, I'm Jen Ferguson with Artistic Painting Studio, and today I've got a tumbler project. We're gonna make ourselves a Christmas tumbler. We are starting a fun holiday um, tumbler, so. I'm gonna go through the process of what you need to do to get this started in case you are new to this. Um, I'm using what's called a 24 ounce plump. And the first thing that I always will do is just grab some sandpaper. This is 220 grit. Uh, we're gonna do a light sanding, okay? You wanna sand the bottom and the sand the entire surface. I always try to make sure that I'm sanding around the top edge and that bottom edge because there's a little bit of a curve there. The next thing that I'm going to do is go ahead and just spray this with some isopropyl 91% uh, rubbing alcohol and clean it off really good. When you're doing this, you're just making sure that the stainless steel, if there was any kind of coating or anything on there that... Um, you have gotten that off and that everything is going to adhere, okay? So once I have that done, I do try to keep my hands off of the tumbler so I don't transfer any oils back. So now I'm gonna put it on a tumbler holder, okay? So that I've got some place to be able to set it down and work with it. The next thing we're gonna do is prime this. So I'm gonna grab some Bondego. Okay, here is our Bondego. This is the black Bondego. And when you haven't used it for a little while, um, it will separate. So once you get your container open, and don't let this scare you guys, we do solid in 10 ounce and quarts as well. Uh, I just happen to always have the big gallons back here. Uh, we wanna stir it because it's gonna seem really, really liquidy on top. And you wanna just get in here and stir it because it's gonna get thicker and thicker and thicker as you do. So just take a couple of minutes don't be in a rush, make sure it is well stirred again. And you pretty much have to stir it every time. This is a paint and primer in one, and its main property is adhesion. So it works great on stainless steel, glass, plastic, metal, I mean, many, many different surfaces. And with the application of metallic foils, uh, you may have to make sure that your surface is bond it well, okay? So this is like a bonding primer uh, and it works great underneath your foils. Okay, once we have that stirred up really super well, I'm just gonna take some of it out and put it on a plate. Sounds like we have my stir stick. Try not to waste any of that good stuff, okay? <laughs> and then we're just gonna go ahead and paint the entire surface. So you wanna paint the bottom of it and the entire part. So I'm trying to make sure that I'm at least brushing on as neat as possible, okay? so that I have minimum amount of brush stroke. And have full 100% coverage. Uh, the black Bondego pretty much opaques in one layer, um, which is awesome. And then because we're on stainless steel, I do like to allow the primer to dry for hours, okay? Probably minimum of four hours. A lot of times I just go ahead and let it set overnight. So if I'm doing a few tumblers, I just get all my prep done on one day and then come back and do my next layers. That way I'm not sitting and waiting for anything to dry, just get all that prep work done. Okay, so once you have a full coat on here, just come back, make sure your brush strokes are from end to end and that they're nice and neat on here. 
just about done. I'll double check the bottom. Everything looks good. Okay, we're just going to let this sit and dry, and we'll be back for our next layer. Okay, our tumbler has completely dried, so our black bondego is thoroughly dry. I let it sit overnight, and our next step is going to be the Artsy Bill Embellishments Foil Adhesive. And I've already taken some of it out and put it on what I call a sticky plate because it's just easier to use off of a plate, okay? And when I'm brushing on, I will use my mist bottle and just put a little bit of water on there, okay? Just a tiny bit because even though this is a brand new jar, I feel a little bit of water just helps it to brush on smoother because the adhesive is not a self-leveling product. So any of the application marks you make when putting it on will be there when it's dry, okay? So you wanna put it on as smooth as you can and a little bit of water will definitely help with that application. So we're doing the same thing we did with the black Bondego. We are just going to get on a full layer of adhesive And the adhesive goes on uh, milky white, as you're noticing right now. It will dry completely clear and shiny. Uh, so when it's starting to get to the dry point, uh, you'll notice that it's going clear. It's gonna be shinier than your surface probably was to begin with. Um, and again, because I am doing the stainless steel um, I have a tendency to like to let this dry longer. I will normally let this sit overnight, but if you don't have that much time, at least let it sit for probably about four hours because that way it's going to dry to a really good firm hard tack and will provide you with the best foil transfer. So just make sure, again, your brush strokes are relatively neat none of that brush stroke is going to disappear so just try to get a neat job on there okay let's go put this someplace safe and let it dry okay i have picked three different foils to use on this tumbler twinkle red sparkle silver and then elsa which is our transparent snowflake and i am going to use a paper cutter and cut strips and different widths and I like to use this because I'm gonna get perfectly straight pieces okay and then you can cut these in any width you want okay that was pretty narrow we're gonna go a little bit bigger but this will give me the ability to um, stripe this knowing that these pieces have perfect straight cuts and then I can figure out my pattern as I actually go so this is um, Fiskars uh, is the cutter and just found it at, I think it was from Michael's, but we'll have links and everything in the description below. And I'm just gonna continue to cut. I'm gonna let the red and the silver be my accent color, so that is why I'm doing smaller strips of both of these foils. And then the Elsa I want to be the primary uh, design, so I'll cut a little bit bigger strips. And I'm not worried about them all being the same. I think it's kind of fun when you do vary your size and let some of them be wider, some of them be a little bit narrower and just have fun with it, okay? And I'm sure this is plenty, but I don't wanna to have to stop and cut again. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna cut a few extra. <laughs> okay, with Elsa, um, I just wanna show you that I did test and saw, determine which was the transfer side and which is the carrier side. And I put the tape on the carrier side. So when I cut these, I wanna make sure I'm laying them down all in the same direction because I have transfer side facing down right now, okay? And again, 
They don't all have to be the same size, but I am definitely making these a little bit wider to be the focal point. Let's get one more, and I think we'll be ready to rock and roll here. But this paper cutter is great when you're trying to create very straight lines in your transfer and application. And then I'm going to go ahead and transfer the tumbler to my turner because it is going to be easier to work on the project uh, in this position instead of trying to hold on to this and, and do something, okay? I do try to be careful and get minimal amount of fingerprints when I transfer it over, but sometimes it's hard, okay? On the inside is our foam. We just want to make sure that foam's pulled out far enough and then just slide your tumbler on there. And we're going to have fun with this. We are going to do a diagonal pattern. And you can figure out whatever diagonal direction that you want. Uh, it can be slightly diagonal or you can put a real drastic curve on it, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and lay down a few of these foils, okay? Trying to match up as close as I possibly can and lay those on there. You can also overlap as well. I'm trying to go right onto it, but I think I probably better overlap a little bit because I'm leaving a little bit of a black line, which might not be a bad idea, okay? And then just try to make sure the only one that you have to really be careful about is the Elsa on making sure that you have this foil going on the right direction. The silver and the red are easy to tell, but Elsa, <laughs> if you get that one upside down, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging. Okay, I'm gonna continue with this pattern, okay, of doing the silver and then the red. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a few of these on I'm going to actually overlap a couple of these because it's going to be easier than trying to just match them up perfectly. But the Elsa print is completely transparent. So our black is definitely going to show through there. Whereas with the, um, the silver and red, these should transfer pretty opaque. And just give us some fun, fun stripes. Okay, here's where you just have to improvise <laughs> when you get to the end. I've never measured it perfectly to try to get this to be um, like equally distributed, okay? And right now I've got a little bit of room for both colors. So I can either just put in a red or a silver, or I can still make some skinny. I think we're just going to do red and finish this one off, okay? If you want to make sure that it comes out perfect, okay, then I would measure the circumference of the um, tumbler and also... That way you can determine the width of all your stripes and get it to come out a little bit more accurate than I did, okay? But hey, it's a fun tumbler. This is just gonna be fun for Christmas. And once you have all your foils on, then you can start scrubbing one at a time. Okay, I'm gonna work on just that last red stripe but I'm making sure as I'm pulling it back that I'm happy with the release. And if I feel like I can get a little bit more color to transfer, I'm gonna put that foil back and scrub it again. And then release 
when you're happy with that, okay? Now, the one thing that you just have to be careful about when you've already released one of the foils is you wanna to try to keep your toothbrush off of that area and not scrub over it because that is exposed foil. And you don't want to scratch it, okay? Okay, with the transparents, once you get them started, they normally will do almost a perfect release, okay? Sometimes it's just the challenge of getting them started. And there we go. Okay, we got two of them on there already. Woo! Okay, I'm gonna keep working around. Okay guys, here we go. Look how cool this is, okay? How festive and fun. We still have one more thing to do and that's gonna be the bottom. And I think we're just gonna do our red foil on the bottom, keeping it festive. So I'm gonna cut off a piece. Sometimes it's easier just to take it off, set it directly over it, and that way you can use a bigger scrubber. And really scrub that bottom, okay? Now you can see there's a little re recessed area all the way around. Now you can either leave that black for some contrast since there's black on this cup and then just leave that, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that. I didn't try to scrub it down, but now we have the whole cup covered, okay? Now our next thing is gonna be is to just go ahead and do our epoxy pour. How fun is that? Okay, grab your favorite epoxy and mix up part A and B and stir together super well, okay? I normally stir for a couple of minutes that's why I was doing this ahead of time. And then I'm gonna grab what's called diamond dust. Okay, beautiful stuff, a little sparkly, okay? And we're gonna add just a touch of that to our mixture and just give some extra sparkle to our epoxy. Okay, so once you get that diamond dust in there, okay, you wanna stir it up again really good Make sure it has mixed throughout all of the epoxy. And I've already got my turner turning, okay? So this is a tumbler turner, and it is just going around in circles so that as we pour our epoxy on here, it will continue to move and level out the epoxy. 
so that it does not drip or run. And I just use my hand to spread going from top to bottom. You can fill it. You'll know where there's areas that don't have enough epoxy and you need to add more. And I like to do the whole uh, top part of it before I add to the bottom, okay? So I just want to make sure that I've got enough coverage. If I fill any spot that feels like there's just not much there, you can just keep adding. If you feel like it's too thick somewhere, as you start moving that around, okay? You can see how I'm just moving it to the other side. Okay, and I'm going to go back to going top to bottom so that I can feel Now I'm starting to feel like I've got really great coverage. And if you feel like it's too heavy any place, you can always wipe that excess off, put it back in your container that you mixed in. Because we normally will do a couple of layers of epoxy just to get really good coverage, make sure that it's protected it can handle your hand washing. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and add to the bottom. And I do have plastic underneath, about a three mil plastic uh, sheet, uh, just so that if I have any drips, it'll catch. And then just Critique, okay? Make sure you've got full coverage. Make sure it's not too heavy in any spot or too thin. <laughs> so I do spend a couple of minutes doing this, okay? I don't just put it on and walk away. I want to make sure that it looks good. Um, as it's spinning, I'm keeping an eye on it, just making sure that it is leveling out well. I don't see any spots that are really super thin. Um, if I see any little div divots, okay, you saw how I just pounced on that. That gets rid of those. When you feel like you've got good coverage and everything is looking really good, we're gonna grab our blowtorch and you can use definitely a smaller size blowtorch. I have a full size blowtorch here, okay? And if you want a torch about eight inches away, okay? And all you're doing is gonna bring all the air bubbles to the surface. And it's not a bad idea to go ahead and keep an eye on your tumbler for maybe about five or ten minutes. Just make sure nothing looks like it's gathering in one spot, that you had it level and it's spinning well. And then just let it sit for at least four to six hours. Normally I just let mine spin overnight. Come back and put a second coat on if needed. Other than that, we're done. Thank you so much for joining me for this fun tutorial. You will find all the supplies and materials in the description below. And make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming tutorials.